Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm here to talk about something of an important issue. Unfortunately, I really don't like having to do this. This is a gaming channel. We like to have fun here. This is all about enjoyment. It's all about how to spend your leisure time. Unfortunately, since a certain piece of legislation, or more accurately, two pieces of legislation, are being forced through Congress at the moment to stop you from doing just that, then I think we're just going to have to have a few words on the subject, are we not? So the subject of today's ridiculous lecture slash rant is the SOPA, the S-O-P-A, the Stop Online Piracy Act, and also Protect IP, which we should never forget about because that little act, which if I recall correctly, has the short form PIPA and stands for Preventing Real Online Threats to Economic Creativity and Theft of Intellectual Property, which I might... Ad is a fairly terrible acronym because it can read in a very bad way. I just like to take out a little bit there. Preventing real online threats to theft of intellectual property. Yeah, we're going to... God, my... America, please stop with the freaking acronyms. Good God. It's like everything in America has to be marketable. Everything. It's buzzwords. It's freaking acronyms all over the place. Even in politics. It's a joke. It's distilled down to sound bites and nonsense. Can we please act like grown-ups? This is lawmaking we're talking about, not a freaking text message conversation. Anyway, so these two acts have potentially disastrous consequences for things that we enjoy doing. So that alone should be getting you a little bit riled. Now, to start with, before you say, oh, well, I'm not in America, so this doesn't affect me. Yeah, it does. The problem is a lot of the companies that would be affected by this legislation are in the States. And also, we're talking about a country that has a great deal of control over the internet. So that's something that you might want to consider to be somewhat dangerous. Now, allow me to give you a real world. This is not a speculative example. This is a real world example that happened just a few days back. So Universal Music has been getting up in a tizzy over Mega Upload. Mega Upload, they brand as a piracy site. On the 29th of November, Mega Upload was unavailable across many countries, including the US, because of a DNS takedown request, and it was branded as a rogue site. The law enforcement authorities got involved in this. So uh, that, if anything, is a bit of an impression of what's to come. However, it doesn't end there, because this is the thing about this bill. It's not just about taking down, quote, rogue sites. It has far more dangerous implications. So... In support of Mega Upload, a bunch of artists, including P. Diddy, Snoop Dogg, Kanye West, produced a song in support of Mega Upload in order to try and raise awareness as to what was going on. YouTube was forced to take that song down when they received a takedown notice from Universal Media Group claiming it violated their copyrights. Now, the scary thing is, it didn't. It didn't violate their copyrights in any way, shape, or form. They did not own any of the content in that video, and yet they blocked it anyway. This is an example of obvious corporate censorship, trying to censor the video because it raises awareness of an issue that they don't want people to get all activist about. Why? Because they prefer that people just sit back and be apathetic about this kind of thing while they take away your rights one at a time. The scariest thing is apparently they didn't even need the rights in order to take it down. They didn't need to have a legitimate copyright infringement claim under the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, in order to remove this video, they claimed that sometime in 2009, they'd made an agreement with YouTube which allowed them to take down stuff they didn't have the right to. That should scare the hell out of you. It really, really should. You're talking about a corporation that apparently has the right to widespread censorship across the second biggest search engine in the world, as well as, of course, the largest supposedly free video distribution site and arguably the largest site which enables the promotion of free and open speech on pretty much any topic you can imagine across the internet internationally. That's something that's really important. Internationally, this site, YouTube, is able to allow a medium of free speech to people in pretty much every country you can imagine. However, the problem with this bill is that it could effectively destroy YouTube and any similar site. Now, why, you might ask? There's a fairly large article, a definitive post on Tech Dirt that I'm referring to right here by Mike Masnick. And there is a link in the description below this video, along with all of the other references that I have referred to here, that tells you exactly why that is. Basically, SOPA and Protect IP allow the takedowns of site via DNS blocking 
simply because they could potentially enable copyright infringement. Now, up until this point, there's been something called the safe harbor rule, yeah? Safe harbor rule basically means that unless the site is actively participating in copyright infringement, i.e. it is knowingly and expressly infringing copyright, it can't be held liable for the actions of its users, yeah? It's the same reason that YouTube continues to operate. If some YouTube user uploads a bunch of copyrighted material, YouTube is not responsible for that. It's the user's responsibility. They're not the one who gets sued. The user gets takedown requests, and if, of course, it continues, they, of course, get banned from the site. If they continue to circumvent it, then, yes, the law can get involved in it. Just bear in mind that the courts are actually a limited resource, and we probably shouldn't be wasting their time with kids that upload bits of cartoons to the internet. If you want an analogy, then think about this. Think about the idea of suing Toyota for the fact that some guy just ran into the side of your car with his Toyota car. Is it Toyota's fault that that happened? Unless, of course, it was a very obvious mechanical fault that caused that to happen. No, it's the driver's fault. It's not the car's fault. Let's take it to extreme, shall we? Because let's be honest, SOPA and Protect IP are extreme pieces of legislation that have far too wide-ranging consequences. If a criminal had counterfeit goods in a bank safe deposit box... SOPA would allow the legitimate IP owner to shut down the entire bank and all of the branches without notice, search warrant, or due process. And you might think that that sounds extreme, but no, it's a good analogy because that's exactly what it does. It's basically saying that, well, YouTube, you've got some copyright content on it, so you know what? We're just going to block your entire site. Basically, it would result in the shutdown of YouTube and any streaming services because someone could potentially infringe copyright. And it goes further than that. Think about other sites where you can host that. Facebook. You can host copyright content on Facebook. You could post the copyright image on Facebook. Facebook could go down after that. Let's talk about other things. Imager, Yfrog, Photobucket, things like that. You could even go as far as to talk about things like LiveJournal and people copying articles and posting it on their blog. That could technically be copyright infringement. The wide-ranging consequences to this are absolutely massive. And what scares me as well is the fact that... The lack of due process would allow widespread DNS takedowns of websites without notice, and that basically blacks them out to the internet. There are ways around it, of course, which is why DNS blocking is a stupid idea anyway. It can be circumvented, but it causes a bunch of very real problems, including, of course, security issues, and a wide variety of security and software engineers have already brought up this point from companies like Google, Yahoo, and Cisco. And you should probably listen to those guys, because you know what? They actually know what they're talking about. This is something really dangerous about this bill. The fact of the matter is, the vast majority of people debating it have no idea what it is. They don't have any idea how to use the internet, for one thing. They have freely admitted that. All of this stuff was streamed. You could watch these proceedings. And the vast majority of people had no idea what they were saying. Those that did, of course, stood up against this bill, thank God assuming they were not paid off not to do so. But you also had people saying, I don't know what's going on with this, and maybe we should talk to people that do. The problem is that those voices were in the minority, if you can actually believe that. You want to explain to me why we have a bunch of 50 to 70-somethings debating a bill that would affect the internet worldwide, perhaps the greatest technological innovation that we've had for a very, very long time. You want to tell me that these guys who can barely use a keyboard should be debating this and passing legislation of this magnitude? I'm going to go with no. It's like putting toddlers at the controls of a 747, but not just a 747, every 747, 777, Airbus A320, every aircraft in the world. Do you think that's a good idea? No. But that's what's happening here, and that's dangerous. Now, let's talk about the motivation for the bill, because you might say, oh, well, it's to help reduce piracy. Yeah, we get it. Piracy is a problem. But here's the thing. Big, sweeping pieces of dangerous legislation are not the way to deal with piracy. As many people have pointed out, including Valve, who are directly affected by piracy, not only in the sense that their games are pirated, but they run the largest digital distribution platform in the world. Their sales are affected by piracy. People who are pirating games are not necessarily buying them on Steam. And the head of that company, Gabe Newell, has said, piracy is a service problem, and the way to defeat piracy is to provide a better service than the pirates. And that's why you've converted a lot of pirates over to Steam. It's the same reason why a lot of music pirates have been converted over to iTunes, Spotify, Last FM, Groove Shark, Pandora, and Internet Radio. 
because there are all sorts of different options available that are a better service than just hunting around for pirate MP3s. It's as simple as that. By the way, I might add that 15 hours ago, there was a news article that record labels have joined forces against Groove Shark. Big frickin' surprise. This has actually been going on for a very, very long time. A couple of quotes here for you that you might enjoy or perhaps cringe at. Quote from 1982 from the MPAA president, Jack Valenti. We are now faced with a new and troubling assault on our fiscal security, on our very economic life, and we are facing it from a thing called the video cassette recorder. That was the rabble rousing around the VHS in 1982, claiming that this would kill the film industry. It didn't. How about this one in 1982? When the manufacturers hand the public a license to record at home, not only will the songwriter tie a noose around his neck, not only will there be no more records to tape, but the innocent public will be made accessory to the destruction of four industries. That was from ASCAP in 1982. Did it happen? No. How about this one? From the wonderful Hilary Rosen of the Organization of Criminals, RIAA, the Recording Industry Association of America, a large lobbyist and protection group for the major labels. It was in 1998. Diamond's product Rio, which was an MP3 player, I might add, was destined to undermine the creation of a legitimate digital distribution marketplace. Did it? No. This continues to happen, and it's large companies and corporations trying to protect their dinosaur business model. And why? This is what it really comes down to. Why are they doing all of this stuff? Do you really think it's just about piracy? Do you really think they're stupid enough to believe that this will actually work? No, this is not about piracy. This is about censorship. And you might think, well, that's, that's a wingnut theory. No, think about this for a second. So we're talking about the idea of free speech, and we're talking about the idea of free and independent promotion of products. This is the thing. This is how corporations tend to maintain their dominance. Marketing and a stranglehold on the channels of promotion. An example would be payola on the radio, which was the practice of paying for placement of songs on radio stations, which I might add was made illegal, but it still happened anyway. You ever heard of the phrase, you've got to spend money to make money? That's pretty much what happens when it comes to mass marketing. You bombard every possible channel with your product. And by channel, I'm not just talking about television. I'm talking about multimedia methods. We're talking about YouTube. We're talking about Facebook, all kinds of internet marketing, television, books, magazines, billboards, everything you can imagine. However, over the past few years, new avenues have been created whereby smaller independent companies can promote their products. If we want to give an example really close to home, what the hell do you think WTF is actually is? WTF is WTF is. It's a simple answer. It's a way for indie companies to actually get people to look at their product, whereas otherwise they might not be able to. It's a small part of what I would now consider to be marketing for indie games. Now, obviously, it's an independent form of marketing. I might hate the game. But here's the thing. It gives indie companies, indie developers a voice that they might not have otherwise had to say a lot of people. I mean, your average WTF is video gets a minimum of 100,000 views. 100,000. A few years ago, that would be absolutely unheard of for an indie title. There would be no way of that happening. None. And that's just one of many examples of where independent companies, not only in gaming, but everywhere else, are breaking through as a result of alternative forms of marketing that are not directly controlled by major corporations. That is a good thing for competition. That is a good thing for innovation, consumer variety, consumer fairness and rights, and the industry in general. It makes the industries more vibrant. It makes the industries more creative, more innovative, and, of course, forces the larger companies to work a little bit harder, thinking, hey, you know what? The same run-of-the-mill tripe might just not be good enough for us. Now, what happens if YouTube gets shut down? Who do you think hurts more from that? Do you think that the music industry really cares. They've been fighting against YouTube for ages. Viacom has had a massive, massive lawsuit going on against YouTube for a very long time. Viacom is a massive umbrella corporation. It covers a wide variety of different forms of media. And they are not the only one. The music industry has tried to sue them before. The fact of the matter is that, yes, while there is infringement going on, I view that as less important than the fact that YouTube is used as a platform to promote music that is not under the direct control of the big four. That's something to consider. Works the same with television companies, works the same with film, works the same with gaming. Bear in mind that Activision are sponsoring this bill. Let's think about that. Activision are sponsoring this bill. 
What do they happen to own? Oh, yes, only the biggest FPS franchise at the moment. What would they love to see continue? It being the biggest FPS franchise. What would they love to stop happening? Competition from being actively promoted. Yes, indeed, they would. And that's simple, simple logic. It is corporate censorship. That's what it is. What does it stop? Pretty much everything you can imagine. We're talking about Let's Play content. If you enjoy that, that's gone. Review content. And you might say, well, that's protected under fair use. So that's not a problem, right? It's a bit of a problem if they take down the entire sodding website that you're hosting it on. And think about that. This, is a, this is, isn't just a surgical removal of content. This is a mass tactical nuclear strike on pretty much everything that you enjoy. That's something that you should seriously, seriously be considering. And you might think, oh, it's a slippery slope argument. No, it's not. There is a prime example. Let's just go back to what I said before, the removal of the mega upload song. This is not a slippery slope. This is happening right now. It's been happening for a while. That is obvious and incontrovertible evidence. It is there. It is happening. It is what companies want. SOPA is a bad deal for everyone, as is Protect IP. Do not forget about that. There are a lot of people arguing that SOPA is deliberately extreme so that they can then push forward on the back of it Protect IP, which is slightly less extreme but nonetheless damaging. Think, oh, SOPA's crazy. Let's push through this. This is a much nicer bill. Oh, okay, that's a nicer bill. We're going to pass that. No, it's not. Protect IP is just as bad. Needless to say, this is a large and very complex bill, and I've only covered certain facets of it here in a very simplistic manner so that hopefully people can actually understand it. And for God's sake, the congressman can't even understand it. That's how complicated this sodding thing actually is. But the fact of the matter is, this could result in the removal of pretty much any site on the internet that could potentially host copyrighted content, which means the end of YouTube, means the end of every video streaming site. And more to the point, it kills future innovation. Because... Let's be honest. If we talk about this extreme example of removing YouTube, that's going to cause a massive outcry. Yeah? They probably won't do that. What they will be able to do is take down significant parts of it and censorship on YouTube and the blocking of content will be far more commonplace because they've got wider ranging powers to do it. But here's the thing. Here's what you really got to be worried about. What about the next YouTube? What about the next technological innovation? What about that innovation that doesn't get the investment that it requires to actually get going because this rule, these laws are so strict that investors are too scared? Indeed, there is actually a quote here. I'm using this Tech Dirt article because it's very, very good indeed. This is a quote from an article on Booz & Co. And this is very much about investment and financial opportunities, so-called angel investors and venture capitalists. They say they will stop funding some internet startup business models if these rules are enacted. Why? Because it's too risky. They were talking about needing a 13 times to 20 times return on investment in order to make the risk worthwhile. So you've got a lot of potential tech startups that could change the world, that simply will not happen if this rule is put into place, if these laws are enacted. It's called secondary liability, the idea that you are liable for the actions of another on your service. It's the idea of abolishing the safe harbor laws in order to punish any company that even has the means. And that's the thing, the potential, the system whereby copyright infringement could happen. Everything can have copyright infringement on it. That should terrify you. Now, if you want to read more on SOPA, there is a list of useful links in the description below this video. As I said, I've only covered certain parts of this bill. It is very complex, and you should definitely read about it. There are a ton of people who are much better at explaining it than I am. But the point of this video was to actually make sure that you guys are aware that this is happening, and this is dangerous. So how can you help? The debate over SOPA will be resuming on the 21st of this month. Now, do not get fooled by the articles that said, oh, victory, it's not going to happen until next year. No, actually, it's going to be happening on the 21st. That's when everything resumes. So that was a bit of bait and switch right there. Once more tricky dealings by Congress. What can you do? Well, if you're American, you can write to your representative. And indeed, you should do that. There are many ways to contact your representative. Go and find out who he is if you don't already know that or who she is. Go and contact them. Email them, write to them, fax them, call them. Just take five minutes of your time in order to express your concerns. Because you know what? If representatives do hear from a significant portion of their constituents, yes, they will actually do something. They will. The fact of the matter is a lot of these guys are only hearing one side of the argument right now, and that is the lobbyist side of things. They're not hearing from the public opposing it. You have to do so.
If you don't have the time, then of course you can just simply sign a petition. There are several petitions on this subject. I've put some in the description below this video. And that's just a nice easy way of saying, hey, I'm one of these guys. I support this cause. I oppose this bill. If you are outside of the US, you can still get involved in letting people know about this bill, as well as signing up to various petitions and just writing your concerns in. There are various sites that allow you to do that. Even if you're not a US citizen, it's like, hey, guys, you are pissing off the world here. This is kind of a big deal. You should probably stop doing that. Now, I've taken up too much of your time already, but just let me make this absolutely clear. You're talking about the destruction of new media as we know it. And apparently you guys like that because you keep watching my videos. You keep watching the videos of many other YouTube partners. We are a small part of your life and hopefully a very enjoyable part of your life as well. And that is a part of your life that could potentially disappear if this bill ends up going through. And don't make any assumptions about this bill. This bill is real. This bill is bad. And this bill is not going to go away unless it is buried in the ground forever. Thank you for listening and I will see you next time.